Hello, I'm Chris. And I'm Tova, and welcome to Chris and Tova's Amazing Adventures. Today we're going to be talking about how to buy a house in Nicaragua. And if you haven't already seen our other videos, we've recently purchased a house in San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua. And if you're looking for more information about why we decided to buy instead of rent, you can check out last week's video on our channel. As you've seen in our previous videos, we've already bought a house in San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua. And we've done research on, you know, several different countries. We weren't too sure which country, but uh, after seeing San Juan del Sur, uh, we, we absolutely loved it and we decided to buy that. Yeah, we uh, definitely fell in love with the town and we were sold. And then we started the journey of trying to find the right house for us. So once we decided on where we're going to move to, we uh, we had to go and figure out how we're going to go and make this happen. So we needed to figure out how to get a lawyer, how to buy, how to go and get a real estate agent, how we're going to go and view all the places we want to go and see. So we went down to visit on one of our trips and we met a realtor, uh, John Creeley, and then we went from there. Yeah, John was super amazing. Uh, he works for Remax. If you're interested, we'll put the link in the description below. But basically, he took us all around San Juan del Sur, showed us all the different neighborhoods that we might be interested in, and just different places that uh, a lot of expats like to live. We also went and did a couple of viewings uh, in houses to really see the finishings and what the you know what kind of value there was in terms of price. Uh, for the houses so we could really get a good idea of what it was that we were looking for, what our budget was going to be, and most importantly, what neighborhoods we were in. Uh, unfortunately, on that trip, we didn't find the house, no. but uh, we had a really, really good idea of what we were looking for. So then basically we went home and we started doing some serious shopping. So on that trip down, not only did we get a realtor, but we also got in touch with a real estate lawyer, which you're really gonna need if you're buying property in Nicaragua or most foreign countries. Um, and basically the way that it works is we, we were able to buy the house essentially sight unseen because we didn't find it that first trip, um, but we were able to do that with the help of our realtor and then also our lawyer, which they sign the documents based under a limited power of attorney. The only advice that I would give you, and we didn't do this, so this was one one thing that we wouldn't do next time, is we talked to the lawyer, we got all set up, we're like, yep, you're gonna be our lawyer. And we figured once we find a house, then we'll sign this um, limited power of attorney paperwork. We should have done that when we were in town. It would have been half an hour in, out, sign the paperwork. Uh, instead, doing that from Canada, a little bit of a rigmarole to say the least. Uh, but we got it done, so just just so that you know it is possible, but uh, you want, definitely want to have some patience. We had to sign paperwork and have it notarized by our lawyers here. Then we had to send it to some government officials within Canada. They had to sign off on it, and that paperwork needed to be sent from their office to the Nicaraguan Embassy in the States, and then from the Nicaraguan Embassy in the States, to our lawyer in San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua. And you had to include all the self-addressed, stamped envelopes with paid uh, shipping right from the get-go. So it was definitely a little bit nerve wracking just knowing that all of those steps had to make it there all through snail mail, which, you know, there's always a chance that something could have got lost in the mail. So uh, a little bit stressful, but we were able to make it happen. So we went all around San Juan del Sur and we actually got a really good idea of the layout of the town and it really really helped us out because there were some places that we saw online that we really loved and we went we went and saw them and we realized the beautiful homes beautiful construction great neighborhood 
but they're on top of the hill and really hard to get to. Or uh, the hike in and out into Maine, into the town, was was substantial, and we wanted to go and be able to hike in and out or walk in and out of town easily, or take a motorbike. And some spots were so steep because it's there's a lot of hills, a lot of um, inclines, so. Uh, it just wasn't possible for a motorbike or to walk normally up and down those hills to some of these spots. But they're beautiful homes, but we learned a lot on that uh, a recce. Yeah, and really, you know, once we went home, we knew that uh, being able to walk into town really easily, go for lots of walks from our house, that was our number one priority um, in terms of, you know, getting those checks in the box for finding the right house. So like Chris said, we really had a great idea of what we were looking for in a house. So we knew that we wanted to be within a 10 or 15 minute walk of town. We knew that we didn't want to be on a high steep hill. And for those that, that like the hills, the views are amazing, but walking was really our number one priority. Not only for us, but for our bulldogs as well. Uh, and then we knew that we wanted to be in a detached home. We wanted to have at least three bedrooms, two baths, and it was really important to us that we had our own pool and not a shared pool. Yeah. And then of course we did want to be in a gated community as well, which is quite common there. There's lots of gated communities, uh, not only just for general safety, but more so because we knew that we were buying the house and we're not going to be moving there full time uh, for well, about a year and a half now, but when we bought the house, um, We've owned it for two years now, so we thought that being the gated community would just also help when we're not there full time. So even though we didn't find the, the perfect house for us when we were there, we uh, kept on shopping online and looking at new houses, new listings, and a few popped up and we had to go and debate what was in our price range and realistic, and we found a perfect house for us. Yeah, really honestly, like people think it's a little bit crazy that we didn't go down to see the house, but you know, we knew we knew the neighborhood, we knew the area, and our realtor was great. He basically like took us on a driving into the area tour to make sure we knew we were in the right neighborhood. Um, with all the pictures that were online with the listing, they were fantastic. Our realtor confirmed that the pictures were new pictures and not old pictures. Everything was everything was perfect. And then basically, you know, just like you would back home, write up the offer, get everything uh, signed online, and then uh, then we were pretty much good to go. Um, the biggest hurdle, honestly, was the paperwork for the limited power of attorney with the lawyer. And again, it wasn't hard, just kind of time consuming and a little bit tedious and uh, waiting for the snail mail. Um, the other thing that uh, people often ask about is, you know, how do you actually get the money there? Because it's kind of different, right? When you're in Canada or US and you're buying in Canada or US, it's very easy through the banks. Uh, so for there, we had to do several wire transfers, which again, these are not difficult to do. However, what was difficult about it is the addresses in Nicaragua are a little bit challenging. And it's kind of no joke that, you know, the address is something like, you're gonna go down this street, you're gonna take the third left and the fifth house on the right across from the convenience store might be what the actual address is for the house. So to get all of the addresses for all of the banks, needed for the wire transfer and the address for the property and all of that kind of stuff that they needed on the wire transfer. It took me about an hour uh, on the phone with our bank in order to set up the wire transfer because they need to make sure everything's spelled correctly and that they have the right address and complicating all of that, everything's in Spanish. It actually went through a little easier than I thought, but it was a little difficult, but we managed. Yeah, people, you know, I would say don't shy away from buying property in a foreign country thinking that it's really difficult. The process is very similar to what it would be in Canada or the US. Just know that there's going to be a few things that are a little bit different. Um, you know, one thing that we found out was different there is that a lot of the houses uh, are selling are furnished. So quite often it's unless it's a brand brand new build. It's a house that somebody's already lived in, they furnished it, and then usually when they're leaving, 
they're leaving to move to another foreign country or possibly go back home. Um, and it's very expensive to pack up all your belongings or all your furniture anyway and bring it with you. So most often it's just left in the house. So when you are looking at cost of houses online, also know that at least in Nicaragua, most of the time it comes furnished. So that's already built into the price. You don't need to really worry about buying all new furniture. So as we finally decided on was a three bedroom, two and a half bath, uh, with its own pool in a gated community and it came with uh, everything you needed to live there so it has pots and pans and dishes had all the beds had couches everything you needed to live there and it was all pretty much set up for us to rent it out on airbnb yeah so we uh through our realtor we got some great property managers uh, from Mango Vac Vacation Rentals, and they're actually a Canadian couple who live down there as expats. So for everyone who is considering moving down to Central America and thinks that it might be difficult or impossible to uh, buy down there, it's, it's not impossible. We did it. We were nervous about it. We were a little apprehensive, but we managed. Uh, the process wasn't that difficult. It's just you gotta be patient. Uh, let the system run through. It's a little slow and nerve-wracking, but you can do it. And I highly suggest that you use a realtor and use a lawyer, um, for sure. You know, they're the professionals. They do it all the time. They're going to know the ins and outs and be able to help you along the way and really make you feel comfortable through the whole process. And we, we can't wait to move to our new house in San Juan del Sur. Nicaragua full-time. Yeah. We'll be heading down there in about a year and a half. Yep. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, make a leave a comment down below. And tune in for more videos if you're looking to learn more about Nicaragua, about becoming expats, you can subscribe and follow our journey.